Hi everyone, Clara is here again. Welcome to Difference Frames the World, a demonetized channel to see the world differently. Before starting the video, we regret to inform viewers that the platform still refuses to monetize our channel on the pretext that our videos provide no value for viewers, which is not surprising to us. We do not complain, and we continue as usual. Today, we want to discuss why the West cannot have world-class leaders like before, and almost all leaders chosen by the so-called democracies are of lower quality than several decades ago. We talked about the new British Prime Minister, Liz Truss, and the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in several recently published videos, and we need to say that they are not the worst. The lack of outstanding leaders in the West is not unusual. Based on the performance of Western politicians, as reflected in the Ukraine conflict, which we discussed multiple times in our videos, those presidents, prime ministers or chancellors are anything but real leaders. Here we call those guys politicians or show people, instead of leaders because they have not yet reached the leadership level. 100 years ago, former US President Woodrow Wilson proposed the 14 Points of Peace in 1918, the prelude to establishing the United Nations three decades later. The US also had President Roosevelt during World War II and Eisenhower, Kennedy, Nixon, Carter and Reagan during the Cold War, and even the two Bushes and Bill Clinton by the end of the 20th century, both Bush and Clinton could still diffuse their influence around the world. Many said Bush Jr. was idiotic, but after two overmatured presidents, Biden and Trump, popped up, people suddenly found George Bush Jr. was not too bad for the country. Even though people doubted her intelligence or wisdom, he successfully fooled Russian President Putin. Bill Clinton was a miracle. He expanded NATO eastward, a root cause of today's conflict between Russia and Ukraine, proving he was more potent than people expected. He could still perform better than Trump and Biden even if his aggressive wife and passionate lover gave up him enough headaches. Bill Clinton did not keep his zipper tight, but he successfully let NATO out at Russia, converting previous Warsaw Pact nations to NATO members. The United Kingdom also had great leaders like Winston Churchill and Margaret Thatcher. But as we mentioned in the previous video about the United Kingdom, after entering the 21st century, few people can remember most British prime ministers' names. Before long, even Boris Johnson and Liz Truss will be forgotten. Boris Johnson was in power for three years, and people only remember his sloppy hair, as messy as today's Britain. The current British Prime Minister, Liz Truss, is dubbed Least Trust. Not only does the British public have less confidence in her, but the rest of the world feels that Truss is an unreliable person. Many even say Queen Elizabeth was unhappy with another Elizabeth bossier than the Queen, and they attribute the sudden decease of Her Majesty to the meeting with the newly appointed Prime Minister, which is not fair for Liz Truss. Also both Johnson and Truss fail to realize that the UK is not a global power anymore, and they are more aggressive than US politicians in most areas. Liz Truss even positions China, which is 40 times bigger than the UK, as a threat to the United Kingdom. The UK threatened and harmed China for a century since the Opium War in the 1840s, and many treasures in its museums were from China as booties. Hardly can anyone find any spoils from the UK in China's museums. No one is a threat to the United Kingdom except its so-called leaders, who are better and grandstanding than problem-solving. Merkel's era ended. The new chancellor, Olaf Scholz, does not possess the quality of a successful leader as his predecessor. The level of his wisdom is as deep as the depth of the hair covering his shiny skull. Germany is stuck in an unprecedented energy crisis, and the winter is coming, which makes things even worse. Germany's energy problem is universal, unfortunately. Even the United Kingdom is suffering. The former Prime Minister Boris Johnson even asked the British to buy a new kettle to save some pounds. It is a typical penny-wise, pound-foolish. There are many reasons why Western politicians have performed so poorly. They cannot see the future. Ukraine, sandwiched between Russia and Europe, should have played the role of a strategic buffer, which is the best fate for the country, and at the same time, the best arrangement for Europe to get permanent peace. However, European politicians were forced to give Ukraine grand illusions through NATO's eastward expansion, leading Ukraine into a ditch and plunging Europe into a political swamp. They gave the best to Ukraine and the worst to their people, 
which put them in a dire situation domestically and internationally. They also lack the calmness of a political leader should possess. Take Liz Truss as an example. She regarded pressing the nuclear button as the prime minister's responsibility, which scared the people who did not know Great Britain had almost become a third world country. Although Macron and Scholz had done mediation work between Russia and Ukraine after the war, they were still held hostage by domestic emotions and political correctness. They do not know the history, let alone learn from it. How can leaders know the future without a profound understanding of the past? No think tanks or institutions can instill that kind of knowledge and awareness into the heads of those leaders, as stereotypes, biases, and the so-called political correctness kidnap tanks and institutions themselves. In the West, many so-called experts never went to China, but they can still publish books smearing China and misleading their audiences. There should be at least one politician or two in the West who are less idiotic, but they are destined to be short-sighted, as they need to make unrealistic promises to attract voters' eyeballs. Also, most Western politicians, if not all, represent interest groups, not the people, so they do not speak for the people. For instance, Nancy Pelosi cost the US government and military about 100 million US dollars by flying her to Taiwan out of personal and partisan considerations, which significantly helped China actualize its reunification dream. Did she consider her country and people's interests when doing that? The US has half a million homeless people, and each of them could get 200 bucks for food or clean water if US President Joe Biden had stopped Nancy Pelosi from visiting Taiwan at the last minute, as Donald Trump had done by ordering the US Air Force not to send the lady to Afghanistan with military planes. Even though many blamed Trump for his America First policy and ridiculed his mega, making America great again, he outperformed Joe Biden in many areas. At least Trump could talk more beautiful lies than Joe Biden, and the latter has to use a teleprompter to say something he does not believe is correct. Donald Trump earned a higher reputation in China than Joe Biden for making China great again. The world was more entertaining when Trump was in power. Nowadays, people have a hard time distinguishing politicians from comedians. They make promises and talk all the time, but they never take action. It is another version of NATO, no action talk only. Last year, the G7 Summit 2021 talked about BBB, Build Back Better. Can anyone still remember what it was about? They talk only with no action because they are employees of their governments or merely contractors of their government agencies, not the owners of their countries. The former Secretary of State, Pompeo, is proud of stealing, lying and cheating. When he left office, he could not land a job until an anti-China think tank gave him a job with a compensation much lower than a Uber driver. That is why he was glad to take the olive branch when Taiwan offered him to urge the US government to recognize Taiwan as an independent country. It is said that the money he got from Taiwan would take him many years to smear China, as an ordinary employee in the think tank. Beijing has sanctioned Pompeo and any corporations wanting to do business in China mainland, Hong Kong, and Macau dare not hire him, just like today's enterprises avoiding contact with Nancy Pelosi's family members. We are glad to see China is finally sanctioning America's government officials, so there will be fewer people following their suit in the future. Western politicians mind their votes when they are in power and care about their future when their terms are over. As a result, when their interests and country's goals do not match, they will not hesitate to seek personal gains. Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan is a perfect example illustrating this. However, she miscalculated Beijing's determination, so both her family business and America's interests suffered from her irrational move. Many say the US is declining, and they are correct. The country declines because many American politicians and lawmakers are corrupted, short-sighted and good for nothing. The US is in trouble and its government does not perform, but Europe still dares not say no to Washington, and most European politicians do not protect their national interests. Several days ago, we made a video about the US and Europe's price cap to impose on Russian oil. Those G7 finance ministers were simple and naive in reaching a statement like that. When their people do not have enough hot water for showers, they still talk only with no action. The recent IPEF, Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, might become Indo-Pacific economic failure, as an essential player, India, is not keen on it. Modi is brilliant, 
at least more intelligent than his European counterparts who follow the United States closely. As we said in a previous video, the winter of 2022 might be a nightmare for European politicians, and it is closer every day and night. Before ending today's video, we want to thank our supporters and patrons again for their continuous support, which has kept DFTW surviving for so long in the past nine months. Starting this week, we will have to upload two videos each week, as we cannot afford to update the channel daily. It is a hard decision, but it is the only option to keep DFTW alive before we can overcome the financial difficulty.